Hello everyone, today is November 6th and I wanted to do a video specifically on hierarchical deterministic wallets, HD, common misconception, HD standing for hardware wallets, nope that's HW, just don't get those confused because they are easily confused. So HD, hierarchical deterministic wallets, there are some posts on Twitter and um, I don't have them in front of me but basically someone was at, it was about recovery and seeds and understanding derivation paths and being able to reclaim your funds um, by yourself without having to rely on like Satoshi Lab servers or Ledger servers, things like that. So before I get into it, because there's so many different BIPs with hierarchical deterministic people, you know, it gets confusing. So it's confusing for everyone. And there's no standard either, which is what leads to people losing their funds, or at least a lot of times people just think they lose their funds. They're not actually gone. They just don't know how to get back to the right uh, derivation path. Um, and we'll get to that. So first, before, we need to talk about, you know, your basic standard address. So I'm bringing up a paper wallet. And this is basically how, you know, um, Bitcoin started. Now I'm using pay to script hash segwit, uh, which isn't how Bitcoin started. It started with legacy. But the initial core wallet generated independent addresses. They were random. They were not related to each other. They were not hierarchical and they were not deterministic. You could not determine a future private key based on something you have um, in in the beginning um, and that's how it works for paper wallets so right here for example in the bulk key section I generated four addresses and it comes with its uh, private key these are not related to each other whatsoever if I were to put funds on one of these addresses and then I lose it let's say you fresh the page and you never saved it that money's gone forever if you don't have that private key it's gone um, or maybe you saved one of the addresses but not all of them and then that was kind of the way how hierarchical deterministic wallets came about which was um, ease of use for the user so you don't have to keep track of a whole bunch of different private keys so like in one example let's say you have 20 different receiving addresses for whoever whatever different reason you now need to keep 20 different private keys at the bare minimum or load them into a wallet something like that um, but with an HD wallet all you need to keep is the seed and that's where it came that's where it birthed out and it was also a kind of a privacy thing too because um, like paper wallets they do encourage reuse I don't reuse them and that's why I promote the sweeping feature use it and when you're done you know when you're done accumulating ready to spend sweep it to another address um, so let's get into this. I'm going to start with BIP32. BIP32 is not the word list or the mnemonic phrase. You know, it's not your 12 word. BIP32 is the hierarchical deterministic wallet itself. It's where it has the parent key, and then from there it can create child keys that are deterministic. As long as you have the master seed, you can generate those same key pairs in the future. So back on the paper wallet, if I were to lose this and I regenerate, there's no way to regenerate these addresses, right? They're, they're gone forever. Whereas with BIP32, you have your seed, and then you have your parent addresses and child addresses. If you lose some of those child addresses or parent addresses, as long as you have your seed, you can get those back, assuming you go down the right path. Now BIP32's derivation path is basically nothing. It's just uh, MO. We'll get to that in just a bit. After BIP32, the seed was almost, you know, it was just ugly. It was longer than an address. It's hexadecimal. So BIP39 came about. BIP39 is the mnemonic phrase. That's where you have your 12 word, your 15 word, your 24 word, whatever it is. You've got your words and optionally a passphrase. That is BIP39. BIP39 got stacked on top of BIP32. 
the mnemonic is used to create your seed. Remember, your seed is the start of the BIP32 hierarchical deterministic, so you don't lose your keys, like if I did that. Whoops, key's gone, right? If, if you have a seed and a hierarchical deterministic, you're not, uh, you don't have to worry about that as long as you still have your initial seed. The mnemonic makes the seed easier to keep because you have a word list. You end up with something like, did they have an example here? It doesn't look like it, but So here's the word list, and you can see there's many, 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 many words, and you actually only need the first three letters of each um, in order to recover them. So if you lose some, then some of the letters, you can't figure it out, so be it. Um, but there's not a lot of words that are very similar, so if you have the first three, you can figure it out just from the word list. So you take this word list, your word list then gets hashed and becomes a seed. All right, so that's BIP32, and BIP39 sits on top of BIP32. Now, to make things more confusing, then came BIP44. So what's BIP, what is BIP44? It is not hardened keys. It is the multiple account hierarchy for deterministics. So when you see the derivation change, when you see M44 apostrophe slash, zero apostrophe slash, zero apostrophe, that's BIP44. You have all your different M's, M44, whatever, that's your main derivation path. And so here you go, here's some example, M44000, and then if you want to get the second address in that initial chain of 00, you'd have 0001, and then you would have a change address, which is takes in this second position here as 1, and then you can do the same thing. This could be a 0, 1, this could be a 2, right? That could be a 3, and you just keep using it, and there's millions of addresses that you can use so you don't run out. So that's BIP44. Okay, there's still more BIPs. There's BIP49 and there's BIP84, because BIP44 is um, going to produce a legacy address. Not exactly. So let me show you. So I'm going to go over to Ian Coleman's BIP39 um, generator thing here. And I'm just going to hit generate. It's going to create a mnemonic phrase here. I can put in a password if I want. Here's my seed. Remember what we were talking about back here? This is all that you really, whoops, where'd I go? That's all you really need to save. Um, but it's a lot easier to save a mnemonic. So that, again, that's where BIP39 came in. BIP39 is also the passphrase part portion. It's like an extra word. So then we've got BIP49, right? So BIP32, and you, it tells you here on the Ian Coleman site, uh, M0 for BIP32, Bitcoin Core used M0 apostrophe, 0 apostrophe, and then it shows you multi-bit and some other, some other ones there. And this is showing you legacy addresses. So over at bitcoinfunction.com, I'll post the link down in the comments so you can get to this um, this little fiddle thing here. And the code for it is actually pretty short. And it would be even shorter if I didn't generate the BEC32 or P2SH SegWit addresses along with it, if I just generated the private key and the address. So let's go over to back over here, because I want things to be in line with each other. Because in order to know how to recover your H2 wallet, you have to know how these things work and know how to play and work with them. So I'm going to take that phrase and I'm just going to replace this first line here where I generated the mnemonic randomly. I'm just going to change that to two open quotes and I'm going to paste in the seed and then I'm just going to hit run. And now I can see I have a mnemonic phrase and my first address is 1CUCX. If I went over to the Ian Coleman site and I could see that my first address is, oh, I'm on BIP32, it's BIP44. So that's a, your first example of how people get lost on there, right? Different, it's based on your der derivation path. So I switched over to BIP44 and I have one CUCX. Good, I have a match. If I want to get the second one in the chain, I would go to where I created my variable here, variable wallet root 
derived path M44, right? That's your BIP44. If I change this to 1, that will give me the second address in the keychain. I'll hit run, I got 16 VPYW. Go back to the Ian Coleman, 16 VPYW. Okay, so I know I'm in sync and I'm using the right one. Now there's some other examples. Let's look down here, BEC32 and P2SH. I want to illustrate that you can create a BEC32 address or a PETA script, a SegWit address wrapped in a PETA script hash on any of these derivation paths, but most wallets don't do that, and that's part of the problem is the lack of a standard. So you can actually generate one from a BIP44, right, so you're on BIP44, you can take that private key and turn it into um, a P2S SegWit or BEC32. But the, but in order to try to create a standard, there came BIP49. And BIP49, see if I go to BIP49 and I look at the first address, or the second, like 3LD3FH, mine's telling me 39WN, that's for that second address in the chain. If I go to the first address in the chain, 3NMD, you'll see there's no match. The reason is, I'm still using the derivation path for BIP44. If I switch it to BIP49, that's the only change I need to make to this code. And what I'm, the code I'm using, if you're not familiar, this is um, the Bitcoin JS library. So I'm going to hit run, and you'll see now I have 3LD5M. 3LD5M. So it's a match now that I've changed my path to match it. Okay, we can do that one more time. Let's do this with M84. Hit run. And we'll see now my BEC32 address has a KW2RN um, because everything else before is going to be the same on all of them. So KW2R. If I switch this over to a BIP84, KW2R. So I've got a match there. And then what I was talking about before, we had a, um, if we just do BIP32, so neither of those BIPs, we just use a derivation path of M0. One P. That was not a match. Maybe I've got. Uh, okay, so it does. Looks like there is change or no change, right? Yeah, one P five, one P five QR. There we go. So for BIP thirty two to get it to match, I had to put my derivation path as M zero zero. So if you were ever at a spot where you wanted to try to dig in manually and look in your address you need to make sure you know the right derivation path and different wallets have different derivation paths too so let's say you have like a treasure and then you've got your backup key and your seed and then you lose it and then well you still have your key but now you have a different wallet and you want to load it on that wallet if that wallet uses a different derivation path you're going to end up getting a mismatch right let's say this is your so I um, Trezor is on BIP44, right? So you'd say, okay, here are my addresses, 1CUCX, 16VP, blah, blah, blah. And then you end up loading it onto a wallet that is just standard BIP32, and you're not going to have a match because your address is 1P5Q versus 1CUCX. It's the you know, exact same mnemonic phrase, but it's a different derivation path. So people think they lose their funds when they're not actually lost. They're just not on the right path. And the last thing I want to show you is, what if you did have a passphrase? Like, if I go over here and I add in test, and then I scroll down, my addresses have changed because I added the passphrase. So that's a different seed. So if I go over here, it's not going to match unless I put in the passphrase. So how do you do the passphrase? Um, it's just right here, mnemonic to seed. You would just add one more parameter after the mnemonic, and then I could do... I could type it in inside quotes, 
but uh, variable is probably better. So let's do um, p phrase, and then we'll create a variable p phrase, and we'll call it, and then we'll define it in there as test. So now when I hit run, I have one q b s d z. Oops, I'm on wrong paths again. Bit 44. So let's switch this back over to bit 44. Is that right, or is there one more? I think there's one more. That looks right. One B R N U M. That looks right. One B R B I R N U M. So now I've got my passphrase in there, and I can get my addresses and my private keys to match and sync up. So I think it's really important to, before you put any money on a hardware wallet or an HD wallet, and those are two different things, but just most hardware wallets, I'm pretty sure all of them now, all hardware wallets use hierarchical deterministic wallets. So before you put money on it, you need to know what derivation path is being used. If you don't know that, or what BIP they're using, you might end up... Um, thinking you've lost your money and in reality you're just maybe not don't have compatible wallets between maybe an old one and a new one you're trying to restore to um, that was basically all I wanted to talk about today um, if you have any comments feel free to leave them down below again don't forget to like subscribe and share do all that fancy stuff uh, do whatever it is that you do as well, because I always say that at the end of my videos. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.